Good evening and welcome to tonight's ThingLink Interactive Science Image Slam. We will be featuring the winners of our first three STEM, I'm sorry, STEAM challenges focusing on science in the fields of earth and space science, physical science, and life science. I am tonight's moderator and my name is Dan Gallagher. But a little bit first about our uh, two different dashboards we have. With GoToWebinar, all attendees are in listen-only mode. If you uh, have a question or any feedback you'd like, please send that in the chat or question section. I'll be watching both of those. Or you can also be adding into our back channel for further conversation. Speaking about our back channel, we use TitanPad which has the link at the bottom. It's also posted in the chat section. Uh, we know that TitanPad works very well with Safari or Internet Explorer. We've heard that it can be a little bit buggy using uh, Chrome. Tonight's host is Susan Oxnavad, and she is on location from the Illinois Computing Educators Conference. Susan, how are you this evening? Oh, great. Uh, I hope everybody's doing well. Hi, Dan. Hi. Uh, hello to our panelists, and thank you to Laura Moore and Patricia Merlino and Christy Collins. Um, excited to have this webinar here today, and we're just going to share my screen, and then we're going to begin. Um, thanks to all the guests who have joined us. Okay, can you see my screen? Yes, I can. Okay, so today, uh, ThingLink Interactive Image Slam. I'm on the wrong slide already. Um, let's see. Okay, um, so a little bit about me. I'm just going to um, pop some things up just in case you want to sit back and relax and connect with me later. Um, here is my Twitter, at SoxNavad. If you want to copy that down, that would be a good way to connect just to get some of these resources or to share your own ideas for teaching and learning. Um, I'm the ThingLink Education Community Manager and I really love my job because it's all about just bringing teachers together and helping them create and sharing what they create and getting some great ideas from each other. So it's a wonderful job. Um, I'm also an instructional tech coach in an elementary school all day long every day so I'm out there in the field working with kids and teachers and I do have a passion for sharing effective and efficient ways for leveraging the power of technology for teaching and learning um, and I facilitate a lot of professional development including two sessions here at ICE, Illinois Computing Educators Conference and um, I'm a blogger so you can get um, interesting things on the ThingLink blog if you're interested in learning more ideas and if you're interested in seeing the work of others. I also have my own blog, Cool Tools for 21st Centuries, where I do a lot of ThingLink blogging but I also integrate a lot of other tools. So um, if you are interested in resources, hopefully um, you copy that down or you can go into the back channel and you can get um, links to everything we're doing. This slideshow has been shared and it's live so if you like something you see you can click on any of these links just like we're doing tonight and you can take your time and review it. Here's a little bit about the ICE conference. Um, we have a hashtag ICE15. A lot of amazing people <clears throat> will be coming. This is just the beginning of the ICE conference, but over the next course of the next few days, this entire resort will be flooded with educators looking for some great ideas. And um, our theme is make the difference. So um, I'm going to go ahead and tell you in the audience just a little bit about ThingLink for those of you who don't know much about it. Um, ThingLink is a tool for annotating images. So the idea is you start with an image and then you add these little tags or icons on the image and they pop up to live multimedia. So you can create, uh, teachers can create an activity for students and students can create activities to demonstrate learning and actually to construct knowledge as they're learning. And it's a really great tool. It's very powerful because you can truly do anything you can think of doing once you get the hang of using the tool. It's pretty easy. It's really flexible and it can be used across all content areas. So um, <clears throat> here are a couple of the features of ThingLink that you can, we have something called rich URL shortened tags. What that means is that when I put this icon on here, then this pops up automatically to show a little preview of the link that it's going to link to. Now I can link to any link on the web or I can embed a lot of different media and so that's what this next slide is about. So if you create a tag and you pop the link into something like YouTube, 
the video will play live. And you'll see some examples of that tonight as well. And here are all of the things that you can do. You can play live sounds. You can embed images. If you use the app, you can take a picture of an image and quickly embed it right on your image. So it's this really live, deep image that you're creating. And ThingLink's just a wonderful tool for teaching and learning. You can also share it across the web. And so every ThingLink can be shared, and it was meant to be shared. You can use quick social media links so for teachers to connect with each other and to share resources so everybody's not reinventing the wheel to discover new ideas. And you can also just copy the link and you can put it into an email or send it to people. You can do that in Twitter as well. And then you can share your anything link to a website or a blog and you can embed it right in so it's live. And that's great because people can look at it, explore it, see the tags, and it's just really flexible. You can also share it then. Um, anyone can take it and share it and use it. And they can also remix it. So they can start with your image, click on the remix button, and add your own tags to make it your own unique content. So ThingLink is totally flexible. <clears throat> One of the things I really love about ThingLink is the Google Drive integration. So um, <clears throat> what you can do is you can create a link to any Google, any published Google Doc, and it pops up live on the page. So this is an example in my slideshow, but in this actual activity, um, students can take this Google form and they can actually click on the buttons here and submit their answers. And the same is true with a Google slides presentation. So if you've created a presentation and you want students to walk through it, they can do it live on the page without having to click out. That's really great because no one gets lost on the image and the resources are just right there. And the same thing with a video. Uh, you will see examples again of the live video that shows up on the page. So lots and lots of ways that you can use ThingLink. Um, a lot of links and a lot of content in just one teeny tiny space. Also, ThingLink is cross-platform, which is great for teachers today because everyone is doing something else in their school. Some schools have iPads. works great on an iPad. We have a, a wonderful app for iPad and iPhone. Um, we also have an app for Android tablets and Android phones that works really great. And if you don't have the app, you can just use ThingLink on an iPad or on a phone through Safari, through your web browser. So it's very flexible. And of course, there is a web-based version, which is really, really great. And I like to use that when I'm working with students, you know, when I'm doing the design behind the students. So it's flexible. You can actually start a thing link with no Wi-Fi on your iPad or phone. Students can add tags. They could add images. They could add pictures. Uh, they could add video that they create. And then when you connect again to Wi-Fi, it's all connected. So you can also add tags to other things like, you know, live web links. So ThingLink is totally flexible, and we like to say use whatever device is handy at the moment. And again, I just did talk about the apps, I guess prematurely, but the apps are for thing, um, Apple or Android, so it's really flexible. If you're a BYOD school, that's really perfect because you can just use ThingLink no matter what device you're on. And ThingLink for video, and this is a new announcement. Um, last summer, we, we came up, added ThingLink for video to our tools. And it's been a paid premium feature, but now we are giving it to everyone. So if you sign up for a free account, you can actually start with a video instead of starting with an image. And then you just stop the video, and then you put these little tags in. And the tags can just show up on the screen. It can be a question or a prompt that keeps playing. Or the tag can be something that you stop, and you come to all kinds of extra information. So it's great just to start with a, thing, with a YouTube video or a Bright Cove video and then just annotate it and create a really usable resource that you can use with students even in the flipped classroom because they can watch the video, use the pause button, and explore the extra resources. So ThingLink for Video is available for free now and you'll see it on your control panel. It just kind of slipped in there. Um, but because there are extreme hosting costs, of course, for hosting all of this video. So you can't upload your own thing link, your own video that you create to ThingLink for video in the free version. That would be a paid premium account. And I'll go over those a little later. But you can actually use any YouTuber Brightco video. It's just an amazing tool and it's very easy to use. Okay, so that's a little bit about ThingLink. Now I just want to talk about the creative challenges. Because ThingLink has uh, some simultaneous creative challenges going designed to help us 
curate um, a collection of teaching resources and also designed to encourage educators to create them. And um, it's a new tool that was just recently launched, and this is you know the first version that we have right now. And we post challenges in the education part and also in our business part, just to get people active and to get people sharing. And the way the tool works is it curates these collections for us, and so that's a wonderful thing to have. Challenges last about 30 days, and we've been giving away some prizes to encourage participation. Um, the first challenge is we had three science challenges, life science, physical science, and earth and space science, and that's what we're celebrating here tonight, and the winners won three premium accounts for their teachers they work with so they can sort of start to build a collaborative team. And I'm going to take a look right now at the next challenge, which sounds a little more uh, difficult than it is. Here is our live creative challenges site and you can see all the challenges that we've had so far and right now we have a technology and engineering challenge and the idea there is we're taking um, all the di different disciplines from STEAM and we're offering separate challenges to encourage teachers to create and that one's still going on there's still 13 days left and the winner will get a $200 Amazon gift card so there are some high stakes there um, as you can see, when I click here um, on that link, you can see it's very easy to submit an entry. You just click and copy and paste your link from ThingLink. And you can look at everybody's examples here. And I must tell you that the people who are involved in this webinar, Dan, our moderator, and Patricia, and Christy, and Laura, have been submitting images like crazy. So they have a lot of great ideas. I'm just happy to celebrate their work, and I'm, I'm really glad that they have joined their early participants in the Thing We Creative Challenge. So I hope you'll explore that if you're in the audience because there is a chance to win that $200 gift card. Um, so a little bit about um, our tonight's initiative. So we started out with um, trying to support STEAM, science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. Because that's a movement here and the idea is that you know you can integrate all of these things together and ThingLink is an amazing tool for integrating um, but again we wanted to get more participation so we broke them down so the first month was science and now we're in technology and engineering in our next month we will start arts and design and then we'll do math so we're getting this huge collection now here's how ThingLink can be used for STEAM just to show you a little example and then I'll share with our panelists tonight this is a project that I developed. Actually, we worked pretty closely with people who hosted the STEAM conference, and they asked us to present. So I made this uh, project here. It's just a, a pretty simple one about Wyland because he is an artist and a conservationist, and it's a really great topic for integrating all of these ideas into your subject area. So here's how this works. I started with an essential question, and this is a tag that I added here. Who is Wyland and how has the work changed the way people think about the environment? Pretty open-ended question. And the idea here is that students would um, answer that question through research and then put some tags on this image. But, so this would be a base image when I was first introducing students to ThingLink, and we would all be tagging it together. We don't need to be sitting next to each other. We could be across the planet creating these tags as well. So here's just a little bit about what ThingLink can do. This is just basic text, and so this would be some, an answer that a student would come up with, and it links here to an actual website where you can get more information. Great for citations and great for making sure that students aren't, aren't uh, plagiarizing. And then here's the video here that goes along with this would be a different student's answer. This is a student who is inspired by video, maybe more than text. So you can see that plays right there. It's really a pretty great thing. Um, and you could also click to the full video if you wanted to. And then here I have, let's see, let me refresh that usually doesn't hang like that, but since we're on a webinar, sometimes it does. And then here's an image. So this is a picture that was um, tagged on top of an image to talk about how Wyland worked with Disney. So this would be another student's answer. Here's a great one. It's audio. So if you get the Audio Boom app, very easy to do. You can uh, It's integrated, and so then you can add audio. And here's the humpback whale. Not sure if the audience could hear that or not, but it really sounds pretty cool. So as you can see, we're building um, a bunch of multimedia resources so that students can celebrate and learn within their own learning style and everybody can be successful. 
here is a little bit about the way Google Docs would integrate. And so here's a slideshow that it's just a sample of a slideshow that students might create. So this whole image, we could have started with this base image and every student could have just their slideshows linked here for information. And it plays. This one is only one slide, but it plays live. And if you wanted to see the large version, you could click over here. So that's just a way to use Google Docs. And then uh, trying to integrate it with art and um, math. So after this, I would have students create a scale model. And here's an example of a scale model. For this one, I'd have them create the scale models and take a picture with their iPad and quickly just pop it up here so we could all see their examples and document their learning. And then finally, I had students create a mural here. So using the scale model and everything we learned, we do a mural designed to celebrate Wyland. Um, I did have a poll in here. You can link to Poll Daddy. I don't know what happened to my link. I may have taken that out. Um, Oh, and here, here's an exit ticket, I believe. Yes. So this is what I did. This is a Google form. And so after students had studied, I'd want their input. So they'd give their name, and they'd tell me what type of whale should be featured on the mural. And they can type right in there, and they can actually submit it. So again, rather than saying, OK, later, go to this link and submit it, you do it right on the page. So that's an example of STEAM and how ThingLink can be used to, to support STEAM or cross-disciplinary lessons. So now we're going to turn it over to the main event, which is Laura Moore. So I'm going to introduce Laura. And Dan, if you could pass the screen to her, that'd be great. Sure. Laura is a ThingLink expert educator. And we love working with her. She's done webinars for us before. And she creates amazing images of all kinds. She's an instructional technology specialist in Texas. And she has a passion for finding innovative ways for students to create and collaborate she has an amazing blog, and I hope you'll check it out at Learn More Stuff, because I always learn more stuff from Laura. And um, she's the winner of the Earth and Space Science Creative Challenge. So she's going to share her, um, her activity with us now. So welcome, Laura. Thank you. Can you hear me? can hear you, yes. OK, awesome. Um, well, first of all, thanks again for allowing me to participate. Um, I always walk away with, with some great ideas um, from these webinars to try with my teachers. And I'm really excited to hear about the whole thing link for video thing being available for everyone now. I think that's a huge game, cha game changer, so I'm really excited about that. Um, one of my goals this year as a specialist was to model the effective use of discovery education content. Um, I know our district spends quite a bit of money on this particular resource, so I'm always trying to come up with new and innovative ways that it can be used to support instruction. So this particular example is a fifth grade project that my campus has started back in January. And if you hover over the little um, icon right here, the Google Drive icon, um, it gives you kind of the entire lesson plan with a step-by-step -step process in case you wanted to replicate that for your own little kiddos. And as you can see in the center, this is the main question. This is what the kids have to research. So how do these forces change the Earth's surface? And we focused on six different forces, weathering, erosion, deposition, um, sedimentation, and then destructive and constructive forces. Um, I created this original image using Canva, and I saved it to the student share drive so that all the kids could easily upload it to their ThingLink account. But one way that you could modify this lesson would be to have students create their own graphic design using apps like Pic Collage or Canva or, or even PicMonkey. Um, that way, every student product would look unique. So, but to save time, I went ahead and, and did this part for them. So once the image was uploaded to ThingLink, the next step was to tag image with the content from Discovery Education that would help them answer this main question that's here in the middle. And a major part of the assignment was for the students to sort through all of this content and find exactly what they needed, um, which is a, a really valuable life skill right now. So I'm going to go over to um, Discovery Education, and, and hopefully a lot of you out there do have Discovery Education accounts in your district. Um, <clears throat> it's it's totally worth um, the purchase in my opinion. In my opinion, um, when you go to your My DE Services, you see a part that says Science Elementary, and we're just going to go ahead and navigate to the Earth's features, and I'll click on um, the Changing Earth surface area. 
And so all of these areas right here are going to help the students understand um, how those forces change the shape of the Earth. So I'm just going to go into erosion and deposition. And you'll see some interactive glossary terms over here. And I think this part is actually kind of my, my favorite. Um, but you also have four different areas, one for learn, explore, demonstrate, and extend. And the cool thing is that all of these are interactive and um, it provides you a link that you can then paste into your ThingLink image. The only thing is if, if you want to view the image from within the ThingLink, you have to be logged into your DE account. Um, so real quickly, just to show you how that works, I'm going to click on erosion under the glossary terms and you'll, you'll see this interactive glossary that comes up. You have a tab for definition and it just gives it to you in words. You have the animation, which is the part that I like the best. I'm a very visual learner and, and I know a lot of my kids are too. So when you click on it, it plays this little animation and it just kind of walks you through what the... Um, the erosion process looks like and it just kind of gives you some some um, information as it goes through. So you also have a section for a video. So this particular one is very short. It's only um, a minute 39 seconds and then you have some images that you could also use and embed in your thing link and, and to get that URL you would just simply right click and choose copy image URL and then um, paste it into your thing link. So I'm just going to go back and what you're looking for within Discovery Education are these little um, down arrows. And when you click on it, you're going to click on the word share, and it's going to generate the URL. You simply copy it, and we're going to go back to our thing link. I'll go into editing mode. And since this is um, something that describes the erosion process, I will go ahead and click and link it into um, the erosion section in my image and I'm just going to paste the link. I can give it um, a little description so this is my animation and then you click on save tag and then of course when you go to test it oops something happened here when you go to test it, now you can hover and as long, again, as long as you're logged into your ThingLink account, when you click on it, it's going to take you directly to that particular content that you linked it to. So it's a great use of the Discovery Education content to help um, teach these kids the, the different processes. Um, the other parts of Discovery Education are, are very powerful as well. You've got some ebooks, so if I wanted to include an ebook, again, I'm looking for that share icon right here, and when I click on it, it's going to give me um, the URL. You can also embed um, little video segments, so if you find a video segment that you like, you click on it, and it's going to open up to that particular segment. You'll see that it's highlighted down here. It looks like in a different color. You click on the down arrow and again when you click on share it gives you that URL that you can then embed. So the whole idea is, is the kids go through and they, they find the specific content that helps them answer this essential question in the middle, but what are they going to do with all of that information once they have done their research? So the final part of this project is they have to create a Google presentation that they're then going to add as the last piece of their um, ThingLink image. And so this is just an example. I did leave it blank. I've, I've learned in the past that when I do create an actual um, example, they tend to kind of copy it. And so now all of my examples are kind of blank. And But you can kind of get the idea of what the, the finished product would look like. Um, I really, really, really enjoyed doing this project with the kiddos. and. I think it was successful because ThingLink provided that vessel that just kind of held all of that content um, needed for students to really grasp this concept and it was just all nice and packaged in this nice little bundle. So it, it was a great um, lesson and the kids enjoyed it and I'm just glad I got to share it with you. So thank you. Okay, great. Thank you, Laura. That was absolutely amazing. And um, I'm going to get the screen back here. Dan, if you could share that for one second. And then I want to uh, elaborate on, you said so many wonderful things. but And we also, have, we also have a question that came in for Laura as well. 
Great, great. So um, go ahead and ask that question while I get the screen up, and I'll share an idea from Lauren. Laura. Certainly. Laura, uh, one of our attendees asked, is it possible to access the information without a Discovery Education subscription? Unfortunately not. Um, this, this was actually purchased through our library services um, department in our district. I do, I'm not quite sure how much it is. I know it's a yearly subscription, but it's absolutely worth it. I, I know there's a lot of services out there um, where it's, it's paid content. I know there's BrainPop. You could do the same thing if you have a BrainPop account. Um, but S Discovery Education is one of the most um, popular services out there. So try and, and contact those people in your district that make those decisions and push for it because it's, it's really, really invaluable. Great, thank you. Okay, so what I noticed from Laura is um, there is a way that students could start with um, the image that you created. So I'm just going to demo this right now. It's called remixing, and it's uh, just a little known feature that not everybody uses. So here is Laura's actual image that's popping up on the screen. And you're going to see these tags over here. Oh, I don't see the remix tag. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my slide, but there is generally usually a remix tag that shows up here and I will show it to you on my slide. You can click on it and then that image become it makes a copy of that image and that image then becomes your own. So you wouldn't disturb the original image, but you could keep all of these tags and then just by clicking on this little remix button that's right here down below, you can start with Laura's image so students can have some base resources and then they can build their own from there. So that's just a quick way to get students all to start with one image. So I, and I think that'd be really great for this one because you had such a great collage to start with. So, okay, so are there any more questions? It's actually pretty ironic. A uh, question came in about remixing and okay. you answered it perfectly. Great. So remixing is a great feature and um, it really does save a lot of time. I think for a teacher to start with a channel and put an image up there and have kids remix it, that just takes, I like kids to make their own images as well, but that takes the trouble out of how are they all going to get my image? How are they all going to upload my image? So it's just a time saver. Okay, so our next panelist is Patricia Merlino, and she is also a ThingLink expert educator, and she's a middle school computer science teacher at a private school, Assumptional Regional Middle School in New Jersey. She's also an adjunct professor at the Arcadia University, an instructional technology graduate program, and she holds a lot of certifications, including Symbaloo, individual Google Apps, and Adobe Education. And Pat, Patricia's um, image is totally amazing. In fact, I've tried to reproduce it because I know she used Canva. I asked her about it. Think like a forensic scientist. So, um, Patricia, if you want to go ahead, we'll give you the screen and you can go ahead. We'll let you know when we see it. Okay, I just want to confirm that you do see my screen. Uh, let's see. I'm, yes. I'm frozen right now. You can now, see my so. screen? I am seeing Great. your uh, CSI okay. investigations. Excellent. Okay, so I'm a middle school um, computer teacher and I designed this lesson uh, for my students for middle school grades 6 through 8. My 6th grade students will be doing the CSI activity but my other students are asking to do this as well. <laughs> what I try to do as the computer teacher at my school is I try to do cross-curricular uh, projects. Um, the last marking period we did social studies on ancient Egypt and this time we're um, coordinating with science. I created the uh, graphic using Canva, and this is an original graphic. That means that I did not go out on the internet and find an image to begin my thing link, but I went into graphic and I designed um, this graphic. Uh, didn't totally design it, but what I did was I found uh, different shapes to use. I had a flow of the lesson in my mind, how I wanted it to flow in the classroom, so I customized my graphic to do that. So the overall theme is to think like a forensic scientist, which is why the head kind of takes over the entire uh, frame of the picture. And then the modules, each module is connected to a symbol. So 
for number one, uh, we begin with the CSI theme. I used um, SoundCloud for that, and we have a briefcase. So a briefcase indicates career readiness or training. You know, what do you need to become a forensic scientist? And I link that to a forensics rice, and I'll go over there and give you a little, little peek. Hopefully it connects soon. Uh, what they have on the, um, this module for the rookie training, they have forensic biology, DNA, uh, which focuses on DNA basics. Uh, we have a toxicology lab. We have firearms and tool marks. We have a medical examiner and CSI ethics. And that's, this is loading really slowly, so you would take the first module. I'll kind of go back and go on until it loads some more. So once they've had some training, then we move on to the I. So the I symbolizes viewing or sight. And I could not resist using number two and creating an eyeball. Um, to collect some evidence, I wanted them to understand some basics of a QR before they even begin. I have numbered these, so the assignment that I'm using uh, was triggered from an idea from another teacher. I can't quite take the credit for the idea of uh, the Huck Finn crime scene. It's a unit from EdTech Bytes, so you can download all the QR codes from his website. Uh, but he has a posted a video so the students can understand completely what the assignment is that they're going to be doing in the classroom, their very first CSI assignment. We then move on to the symbol of a marker, which indicates writing. So what will they be doing with writing? So here's just a little picture of their book uh, where he stages a murder, that he was murdered. So we move on to using our iPads. I have the QR codes um, that students will be scanning and collecting the evidence using their iPads. So that is how uh, we go out into the field. So you know, when you're a forensic scientist, you work in the field, and then you go back into the computer lab. So they have six uh, clues to collect in the, in the computer classroom. And I'm kind of setting up the classroom because there's a, a lake, there's a cabin, and there's a trail. And the, the computer lab, the way it's situated, works out really well for that. Then we go back into, and again, here's the symbolism of we're back into the office, uh, which is the computer lab. We're using the desktop computers. And students, the project is integrated with um, Google Apps. So they're going to be drawing a, 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 the crime scene you know, based on the evidence that they collected. Then we go on to uh, the information, the evidence they collected with the QR scans has been copied and pasted into Google Docs on the iPad. Then we move into the desktop, and then they analyze the evidence, and they have to develop a theory based on the evidence. We then move on to number four. Five. And this is the use of Google Forms. This is Susan has done this uh, before, where they actually turn in their CSI report to their CSI superior, uh, which is me. So I, I've been using this inbox for a couple of years, and I, I've been following Susan for about three years on her blog, and I found this idea of hers, and I have been using it ever since. Mm -hmm. It's wonderful. Uh, I do use Google Classroom, which is also a fabulous tool, but this is very suitable for the sixth grade uh, students. Um, so they're just going to um, hand in their assignments, copy and paste from their Google Doc, and then turn the assignment in. Once students have mastered these skills, then I do have some enrichment activities. Um, some more challenges where they can go back to the CSI lab and uh, complete case two, case two, which is about a missing dog. Uh, the other cases are a bit macabre and may not be quite appropriate uh, for sixth graders or middle school, but the case of the missing dog is a very nice case for them to solve. It's an advanced case. And students also 
we're back here again. Didn't mean to click on that, but here we go. Let's see if I have that here. Okay, so uh, this is case one, rookie training. I'll go back since it finally has loaded. And I've been playing uh, this, uh, the game. It's game-based learning. And I've been playing the game. If students need to create an account, they need to register their account if they would like to save their game. So we'll save their progress and they get to complete the, the modules and they are quizzed afterwards. So I'll just click on the guest option when the game starts. I've had so much fun playing this mm -hmm. and I've, I've learned um, some interesting information as well. Okay, so you can see that um, it's based on CSI. All right, here's their checklist. Students get to decide which one they're going to do first. Uh, for my Huck Finn lesson, I'm going to just have them complete the module in forensic biology because it includes DNA testing, DNA basics, and anything to do with firearms. So um, that is CSI game to play. Let me go back to the thing link again. And then I found another site uh, where it's a different game-based simulation that students can play uh, for another CSI experience. So this will load a little bit. And so this is, you know, another very interesting, a little bit different. What I've done with my thing link is I have taken the thing link and brought it into TAC. And I've created a lesson from TAC. So students, when they come into my classroom tomorrow, this is what they will uh, access via Symbolo. Because I do use Symbolo uh, as a spinoff uh, for students to start all of their assignments in class. So I uh, added the graphics for CSI. I color coordinated the background in TAC. Here are the assignment details. This is a link to the, my inbox. And this is the narrative uh, for students to set the stage. It explains the process. Right. Here are the student objectives. OK, and then ready to begin. And here's the thing link embedded. The only thing that I did not cover um, as far as the STEAM um, standards that are covered under life sciences, it includes structure, fun function, and information processing. And you can connect this really well with ELA, ELA literacy for text evidence, short research projects, and gathering relevant information. So you can connect it not only with science, but with um, ELA standards as well. Um, amazing. <clears throat> Thank you, Patricia. Um, I saw some questions in the audience. I don't know if, if there are any others, but I'm going to demonstrate uh, one of the questions. So I'll go ahead and show my screen. So there was a question about um, how do stu students all work on the same image? So I thought I should show this because it's just easier to share this way. So here is my ThingLink account. And you'll see at the top there are tabs, and I can look at students. Now, this is a little new, so even for the expert educators in the audience, you might not even have received this version yet. Um, it's just coming out now. But when I click on students here, I can see all of my students. It's really nice. I can manage them as well. Ringo Starr, I can see all of the groups that he's in. I can suspend him. I can change his password. But what's really nice here is that I can also see groups. So these are different groups that I created. And I can create uh, lots of different groups for my different projects or if I teach many different classes. Now, students join this group uh, through an invite code. So for example, um, they would get this invite code. So when they sign up, they just go ahead and type this in. Then they're automatically in your group. And the way you work with students in the same group is um, over here. So this is my account and when I click on my name I can go ahead and log in as one of my groups. What that does is it keeps my primary account intact and I can make all the images I want but then when I'm working with my particular group like this thing like teacher challenge group I change a little bit. You'll notice my icon changes and now I can change the settings to whatever I want to be in that group. So if we all wanted to build this collaborative map together in this group 
I could go ahead and uh, right here, I could go ahead and change my settings so that uh, under settings, so that all, um, all, let's see, where am I? Editing rights allow everyone to edit all my images. So that means in the group now, everybody can build this collaboratively. What's really nice about this, I know you do have to do an extra login, but the great thing about this is then when I go back to me and my account, I don't have to have the same rights. So now that I'm in that account, I can go ahead and look at the images in this group. And these are all the images in the group. And so everybody in the group, I did not create this. In fact, I'm not sure if I remember who created this. It's a Singly Teacher Challenge portfolio. And even though it's not mine, I can go in and I can edit it. So I can add my own tag here. And as a teacher, I can have my little icon there and I can say, great work. And so I can add feedback if I want to. I can also delete tags, so you need to be careful about that. And then I just save it. So you see, I just showed you how to add a tag either. It's that it also, it's just that easy. You just click, you choose an icon, and icons are different for free and for premium. I'll go over there at the end, but this is definitely a free icon. And I can and I can embed my YouTube video right here. That's all I have to do is copy the link in here and it shows up live on the page. So as you can see, it's easy to do. Students will not have a hard time with this. And it's really powerful to be able to collaborate on those images. Now just like that, I could, if the remix feature was enabled here, I could remix the image and create my own. So that's just two different ways that you can do that. I love your image, Patricia, because it's just so geared towards students and what they're doing and what they're interested in today. And it just has so many levels. I think it's amazing. <laughs> Thank you, Susan. Great. OK, and especially your use of Google Docs. That's great. OK, so I clicked the wrong button. But I'm going to go back now and introduce our third panelist and our final panelist today, which is Christy Collins. I'm very excited because Christy is one of our very newest expert educators. And we just saw all the amazing images she created. And we said, please join our group. Expert educators are people who use ThingLink a lot, teach other people how to use ThingLink, and are just passionate about ThingLink. So Christy has tons of um, images that she's submitted for our challenges. She's a second grade teacher at Wise Primary School in Virginia. And she's also an adjunct online instructor at the University of Virginia's College of Wise CTE. Um, she has a lot of certifications as well, Google certified, Amaze Ambassador, Symbaloo, certified educator, and Star Discovery Educator. And of course, as I mentioned, she's we're thrilled to have her as a thing like expert educator. And why don't we pass the screen back to Christy? Christy won the Life Sciences Creative Challenge for this one. And I uh, had a longer title than what I was able. It's irreversible and reversible changes of matter. And I, I We'll give you the screen, Christy, and let you go ahead and explain it for us. Hey, everybody. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, we can. OK. Can you see my screen? Yeah, looks great. OK. OK. Well, I'm honored to be here and to be a part of the ThingLink team. So I'm just super excited about this. And I was excited to win this challenge for the physical science. Um, basically, I created this for my second grade students to try to demonstrate the way that temperature affects um, the, the properties and the changes of matter. So basically, if you look right here on the clipboard, you can see that I've tried to demonstrate with the red, the heat is going to cause irreversible changes. And then with the, the blue, the cold is going to uh, cause reversible changes because um, they're very visual learners as we all know and the standards that this one addressed were the uh, second grade standards um, for the here I'll pull this up for the next generation science and they also went with the uh, Virginia standards of learning that I teach so um, basically what we have over here is I put images of eggs and paper and the eggs and paper represent irreversible because once you uh, fry an egg you cannot put it back to its original state so um, I thought that you know going over the images first with my students would be the most important just to let them see how these images relate to you know the concept uh, same thing with the paper, you know, if you apply heat and burn paper, you cannot return paper back to its original state. 
So on the flip side, when you go look at the reversible, then I could discuss how ice can turn to water and when it's cold, you know, it can be frozen back to its original state. Same thing with butter. You can have butter as a solid form and then it can be melted. When it cools, it's going to return back to its original state. So that would be the first thing that I, you know, would start with in this lesson with second grade students. Um, following that, then I would go to each activity that's uh, located on the image. For instance, with the uh, egg, I have put a lesson on reversible and irreversible changes, and the whole activity, and it has it lined out for you, so you really don't have to do much, but just go through here, and you can do field trip, do kind of more as a whole group to start out where they're younger. Um, and then we also have, when you go to the fried egg image, let's see if it'll, um, it pulls up reversible and irreversible even further. So you can go through here and see um, these go right with the images that I created, the burning wood, melted butter, and so you go through and discuss this and they determine whether these are reversible or irreversible. Well, and then, um, you come to the paper and and I've, I kind of got image happy, but, but you know they love visuals, games, things like that at this age. Um, this is a little loud, sorry. Here it gives demonstrations of heating materials and mixing them together to kind of correlate with the irreversible. And you go here. And we have a lesson on reversible and irreversible changes. So they could go through here and look at um, different examples. And then they can also have a chart that they could go through and fill out as a, as you do class experiments, you can use uh, any of the materials listed here. So down at the bottom, I've added another really great science website. And so here they can go and try out different things to see what happens with the substances. So if you put flour, then you could go through and see what happens with the flour, sugar, and so it lets them do like an interactive demonstration, not necessarily always in the classroom. So I'll go to the other side and we have a video, since we've flipped over to reversible, you can put your YouTube video in. So it demonstrates uh, in a good visual way. And then here we have another great website. As I said, I got website happy. But we have um, videos that demonstrate the physical and chemical changes. And as you and then it also links back to the the same game that I had before from the BBC. So you know, demonstrate the, the ideas here. here. Here are lab activities, so these can be great to do. You can assign some of them to do at home, and you can do some in the classroom, and then here's an answer sheet um, that they could go over afterwards to see how they did. And this one, Are, these are three activities that you can use, and these are great um, as a wrap-up lesson, and you can go through and just review, so you can cut these out and just kind of check for uh, understanding with these. So these are all great to, to just keep reinforcing 
Um, here's an art project, so it ties in with the STEAM initiative. You can have a really good art project using si uh, excuse me, salt and ice, and you can create a glowing experiment, which I thought was really cool, and it gives you the material list, and it shows you how to make it glow. So you can do this with them, maybe like a, a Friday, fun Friday reward or something like that was how I usually use things like this. Um, BBC, as I said, is one of my favorites. So this pulls up a, a large version and it, it's a very interactive website. It asks the, the questions of what's going to happen when this is mixed with water. You know, you change the different materials to see, you can reverse it. It also has a follow-up quiz, which is really great. Um, here we can connect it to language arts. So I like how you can use this across the, the border here. Um, pull up different books, different experiments, and all of this comes from the Scholastic website. So um, really great way to tie in language arts with the activity. Um, on this side, we have kitchen experiments, so these are great to check to see what will freeze first, and they use different uh, substances like apple juice, vinegar, water, milk, as you can see here, and then it tells them step by step what to do. Now, this is a great weekend activity that they can do at home and get parents involved, and they go down and they try the different ingredients. They have to fill in and make predictions about what will freeze um, and then what I would have them do is bring it back on Monday and and we would share what happened you know what they predicted and whether or not you know their predi predictions were correct um, and I think I don't know if I've went to this one let me check okay and here are sources for uh, lesson plans. So these are some of the lesson plans that I use to go with this. Um, I started with lesson 11, different lessons. Um, this one is the one that actually started with the chemical changes, which is where this uh, image started from. So, um, so basically, that's my image in a nutshell, and I hope you enjoyed it. And um, thank you for allowing me to be here and share my image. Kessie, that was wonderful. It's just a great example of how many resources you can pack into this one image. I mean, that any teacher could uh, share that and use your science projects and have their own Friday fun, and they don't need to reinvent the wheel because you've done such an amazing job. Just great. I want to do the glow experiment. Okay. Yeah, so, I, I thought it was fun. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, so thank you so much, Christy, for presenting here for the very first time, too. Thank you. Now, is my screen showing? Thank you. Yes, it is. I'm not. Okay, so I just, we're, we're going a little late, and I want to keep this under an hour, so I just wanted to share this resource here. Um, this is a Padlet wall, and what, what I did is I took all of the interactive images brought, that were submitted to the challenge, and I put them in one place. So anybody who's looking for any science image can look here, and then let me just show you how this works. I love it. Here's the one that Christy just shared, and we can click on it, and there it is, and it's live here. So this is a really nice resource. It, it's a growing resource. Every time we get one submitted, <clears throat> I'll put it up here, and it's a great way for teachers to share their students' projects, because I want to show you how easy it is to add to the Padlet wall. So here is an image that I think should go on the wall. It's one of the very first images I ever created for the Apollo 11. It's very differentiated in reading content and multimedia. So I go to thing link and I go to the share button and I copy and paste that link. That's all I have to do. Now when I go to my Padlet wall, I just double click on the wall and I give it a title. So it's Apollo 11 and I go ahead and add the link. I paste it in. Watch what happens it just shows up automatically. So what I really like about this way of displaying it is students can add to the Padlet wall without having an account 
and it works great on an iPad. So this is how they turn their work in as well. But this is just a nice collection that I, I hope you will explore. It's padlet.com, socks and I'll go back to my slideshow where it's a little bigger. And I hope you'll write that down. And if you can't write that down right now, it's right on the ThingLink blog. So you'll be able to find it fairly easily. Or I've also posted it in the chat. The Yay. So this, this is really great, and it's been pretty popular. A lot of people actually checked it uh, in, in the 24 hours that it's been posted. So here's the link, and I hope you will enjoy that and watch it grow, because that's our idea is to curate the resources. Now, I want to thank everybody for participating, and the first thing I want to say is that we do have two versions of ThingLink. ThingLink Free is great. As you saw, all of the features that I explained at the beginning are free features, but ThingLink Premium is better. And I just wanted to share a little bit about that with you, um, you know, hopefully maybe your tech department is looking to make some purchase or something, you know, this is actually a really good one to do. It's normally $35 for the entire year, and that's a teacher and um, unlimited, no, a thousand students, I believe, so that's all the students you'd ever need. And, but with this discount code, Susan, where did I do it? SusanTL.edu, you can get it for $28, so I hope you'll write that down just in case you're interested in it after you try ThingLink a little bit. Here are the differences in the two versions. Um, ThingLink Free has a lot of the things that you've seen here. There is a, a hundred student limit now to ThingLink. We're giving you the video, but now there's a hundred students. That should be plenty uh, to work with to get your hands on the tool. And then ThingLink Premium has a lot more features, and they keep adding more features and developing them and just making it better and better and better. Uh, for ThingLink Premium, you have enhanced icons, which means there are more of those little icons to choose from. We love these. These are, are designed just for teachers. And we've got more even now because we had them put in some Steam images. So there's lots of icons to choose from. Better yet, you can create your own custom icons, and it's easy to do. You just make a little teeny tiny tag, and even in PowerPoint, you can do it at anything. You upload it to ThingLink, and so you can have your own icons. And I really like this because my students know what they're looking for. If they're visual learners, if they like, if they need the video, and so it's really identified. And again, here you can level your content for students so that there's something for everyone to read and to look at and to explore. So you can make custom icons. Um, unlimited number, I have tons. This is the best feature though, I think. You can replace your images. So this is an image that I created back in 2012 and actually I'm presenting it here at ICE uh, in two days. But it's 2015 and this is just a resource that each of these is a different link. So I have so much content on this one resource. But of course I made it in 2012 so some of my original tools that I linked to no longer exist. And I used to actually replace it every year before I taught it, and it took a long time to remake the image. So now I just save a copy of this image, and for example, this one right here, this Oolone is no longer in existence. So I save it, and I just put a little thing there, and then I upload it to ThingLink, and all my links are still there. I just have to change this link. I find that I use this all the time when I want to just tweak an image, and that's a really nice feature. Also, with the premium, you can do headings and bold to make your your um, things stand out a little more. You can replace branding. The ThingLink branding shows up in the corner. It's in a real good location, but you could actually put your school logo or your cl classroom logo here, which is kind of fun. For my images, I always put my avatar there, and I think it's kind of nice, just a way to identify it, and I think students would like to do that too, because we don't really want them to put their name on their work, but if they put their avatar, they're protecting their identity, so you can teach a little bit of internet safety as well. Um, you can manage the image display, and we saw that with each of our expert educators, you can get rid of some of these buttons here, you can turn on the um, remix features, and you can turn them off. You can do more with your links. So here I have a link that will take me to this website as well as a picture. So that's kind of nice for one comprehensive link. And you can if you want to make the bubbles invisible. So if you have a lot of different pop-ups and videos, it can get pretty confusing. So if you just want students or participants in a workshop to focus on a few things, you can make it so the link is there, but you have to click it and you don't see that big bubble, and I think that's a handy feature as well. Uh, you can make slideshows. Now you can do this in the free image as well, so you can easily connect. There's a button under every image that says add to channel. You can easily add it to a channel, which is a slideshow and thing link, and create a collection of images. Now students, 
<clears throat> can add to your channel if they're in your group so that's how they can turn in their work and you can share it but in the free version you can't embed it anywhere you can just sort of share it with your class but in the pre in the premium version you can actually embed this and you can share this on your blog it's pretty impressive and you just flip through the channels so you can make a lesson you can make us have students keep their own portfolios here and teachers can add comments there's just a lot of possibilities and then there's the thing link for video which of course is now available for everybody to try in the free version I'm really excited but in the premium version you can upload your own video again that takes a lot of uh, storage space so students can create a video on their iPad and upload it and tag it and annotate it with more ideas as they learn a little more there's also improved student management, which I actually showed you earlier. Um, but the thing to point out here is that students actually inherit most of the premium features. So if a teacher it creates shared custom icons, the students can use those. <coughs> if um, And students can publish their slideshow channels as well. So there's a lot of great features for students with just one teeny tiny little premium account up to a thousand students and I showed you the group management so I'll move on last thing if you're into stats if you publish on social media you want to see if other people are using your image you can get all the stats you ever wanted with this advanced dashboard so again here is the, the code the discount code copy it down because you can use it whenever you don't have to use it right now it makes premium go from $35 to $28 and if you really like ThingLink and it's really a good deal because again a thousand students. Susan we so, had a question that came in. Yes. Megan wanted to know if you have a premium account the thousand student limit does that reset every year? Um, there is well so we have just launched the, these limits so I believe if you get to a thousand it's very easy I might have this still on my screen it's very easy to delete student accounts so let me go back to my thing link here and we went to students and we go to here they are so I can very very easily here delete their accounts just with a click of a button so if it doesn't reset it would certainly set you up for the next year but that is a really good question and I'm going to look I'm going to ask that answer because, like I said, we've just this has just changed like within the last week. So I I think it's a thousand total students, but they don't have to be your students anymore when they're not in your classroom. So you can release them, and maybe that's where suspend comes in. I'm not quite sure. Sorry, Megan. <laughs> if you want to email me or tweet me, uh, I will definitely get you that answer. And so let me just on this slide very quickly give you guys all my email Susan at thinglink.com it's real easy so do email me Megan I promise I'll find you that answer very quickly let's see there it is okay are there any more questions or should we um, end this webinar yes can you also add in your Twitter handle yes your email. okay and so again that is I did just send a few tweets so let me just get that up so my Twitter handle again is my name which is let's see my machine's going a little slow uh, okay at Soxnevad S-O-X-N-E-V-A-D and um, I will send one more tweet and you can also follow ThingLink at edu so that's another way to connect as well with us Great. Great. That looks like that answered all the questions. Great. Well, thanks everybody for, especially to our presenters, Laura and Patricia and Merlin, uh, Patricia Merlino and Christy Collins for just being amazing educators and working so hard to create these great examples and for totally inspiring us because I'm inspired by everything I saw tonight. And thank you, Dan, who also creates amazing examples in addition to hosting our webinars. And thank you to all the panelists. And I hope you have a good evening. Thank you, you too. Thanks.